YouTube family. Um, welcome to my page again. And um, we gonna break this bread together this morning. I went to bed last night. I watched the Tamron Hall show at my work and I checked YouTube, wasn't nothing on. But let me tell y'all, y'all don't, <laughs> y'all don't go to sleep. Y'all do not go to sleep. Y'all going in on this video. Now there's nothing online for the whole video and I don't like the little snippets. So I'm gonna post the two videos that uh, are available for those who have been under a rock and don't know what was said. Let's review what was said. This is the first part that is not everywhere. This is from Tamron Hall's uh, okay. YouTube so some page. some of the audience, not laughing, some are. <laughs> that was the reaction at the church. Some people laughed. Some people didn't. Social media, these were some of the comments, Kim. And this is why people don't go to church. There was no Jesus in this. How are you gonna preach the word and put people down at the same time? That's not righteous. How do you feel now? How do I feel now? Today. I feel great yeah. uh, because my intent um, to what I was speaking to first. Thank you for allowing me to come on and asking me to come on. Of course. And uh, taking into consideration that there's always more than one side. Um, there's a jargon that happens in church mm -hmm. that the charismatic black church, there's a lingo. And um, certain things we say that we fully understand, which it almost feel, feels like when you see those cameras in church now, it's an intrusion upon that because for those who don't understand it, they're gonna misinterpret what it means. Um, I've been in church too long. Uh, been, I've held on to my faith too long to deliberately hurt people. I'm not in any way mentally, spiritually, physically challenged to the degree that I have to choose people to be mean to. So. Overall, when you have more than one person giving their opinion about one other person, the majority probably is going to win. A lot of people get on the bandwagon. And so when you ask me, how do I feel? Um, do you mean about my words now or about how it made people feel? About your words now. I feel the same way I felt that night. My intentions were pure. I was making an analogy. Actually, I was honoring the pastor about being there. And I was making an analogy about his personality. I just didn't word it to where as they would understand it. Were which you is, riffing? Was, it, was that ad-libbed? Or were, did you know you were going to say that when you went on the... It was completely ad-libbed. Yeah. yeah, I didn't have a plan to uh, talk to a certain thing. It was, a, it was a form of encouragement is what it was to those who can hear in that way. There are some people who go, you telling people not to live in a trailer home? That's not what I said. I... I compared a trailer home to mansion living. I, it was metaphorically speaking. Everybody wanted to turn my words into accusing people that if you have a, a certain kind of financial status, that I was speaking against that, which is so far from the truth. Uh, now that we watched the video, I want to um, get a broad understanding, not a a, a closed understanding. You know me, I'm about being fair. Folks have said I'm being a fan. I'm not being a fan because I respect and 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 honor the gift that's in Kim. Like I'm, now, I will say that I am empathetic to a fault because I come from a place of empathy. I always put myself in that person's shoes, which is why I made the different videos about the different things that's come out. So let's unpack this. First, this is journalism. This is TV certain questions are strategic and you have to understand the question and the answer. Kimberell is very um, wise in her responses. I've watched several videos on YouTube this morning about Kimber. Okay, now Kimberell back, she backtracking. She needed to, Larry going in, I mean, different folk going in. Listen to the question. She asked, how do you feel? Kim Burrell said, how do I feel about what? How do I feel about my words? Or how do I feel about how it was received? She said, how do you feel about your words? Now, if we would call the apology, the apology was I similar to this, almost verbatim. 
I had no ill intent. My intentions were not to hurt anybody, but if it was perceived that way, if, if I hurt somebody by your perception, I apologize for how, how it was perceived because that was not my intention. That was never my intent. That's what she said. And that's what she's saying now. So it's not a double anything. This is, she's repeating what she said previously. So y'all kind of see things in a open, open, open your mind to what is being said. A little bit more that I will share is some of the names that you called. Um, I was far more disappointed than I was surprised that they had something negative to say. I was disappointed because we've all shared the same stage and background, back rooms and green rooms. And some of their public display and conversation is somewhat opposite of what it is behind stage. I'm not going to do to them what they did to oh, me. Oh, no, no, no. I wasn't talking about that. I was talking to I am, though. I'm yeah, talking about in their ability to be negative toward a name that they built up for so many years. And, and that's disheartening because especially when people can call you, I would have much preferred, especially dealing with gospel, uh, Yolanda Adams, who we're both from Houston, Texas, to pick up the cell phone and say, hey, I have a career to save and I can't agree with your stance right now. I need to say something different to my public. So I rather, I, I would have preferred that to call and say, we've been in the gospel game too long together and this is negative. This is this looks really, really bad. So I'm not gonna be able to affiliate with you. I, was, I would have respected it and said, hey, do what you gotta do, but at least we have an understanding. Well, I mean, and let me be clear here. Delanda is a friend of mine as well. Good. Where I am also from Texas. Oh, okay. And I did not want to turn this into a, because I don't know what happened behind the scenes. What I was asking if you wanted more time for, you said there was more of a backstory to what you said on the pulpit, not the interpersonal relationships of two people that you're now here with me and another person I care about. But I know someone who does care about you and wants in on this conversation. Y'all not going to kill me. <laughs> I'm going to kill y'all. No, I'm just playing. Um, okay, let's unpack all this. Now that we've got Jive's video, um, thank you, Jive, for getting it out. Unpacking this. First, we talk about perception. She talked about perception and how people perceive her, and that's what she has an issue with. And So I think perception is a problem. How we perceive things, how we receive things. The reality is some people are, we hate or we don't like some people. So no matter what they do, we're going to perceive it as negative. Jeffrey Dahmer, first time ever, ever with salvation. I'm like, he's going to hell because I don't like him. So no matter what Kim said, some people, they were dissected and see the negative in it anyway. So let's address this scenario of perception. My first perception was when I very first saw the video, I'm like, Kim, you're doing too much. I'm like, Kim, wow. You threw Yolanda under the bus. Wow. I'm like, Kim, but what, how you, wow. And then Tamron came in. I'm like, oh, <laughs> Tamron told you she got you right together. That was my initial response. Until I got home and I saw Jive's video and I was like, okay, wait a minute. There's more to this. Hold on. And so I put myself in her shoes. That's what but this do and I'm like okay how did how would you feel and we and put yourself in, the, in, the, in her shoes I guarantee 95% of y'all have had this issue with having a friend or an associate be rumored to have been discussing you negatively but did not come to you about the issue I talk to my friends all the time about being consistent and if you're gonna be at a table where people are talking about me, but you haven't told me the issue that you have against me, then you're an inconsistent friend. So what daughter addressed was inconsistency in Yolanda Adams. We've all been there. Nobody likes to be told that their friend doesn't have their back and their friend didn't call them and tell them. So that's what she's talking about. So I could, I could, I can, attest to being there so I can unsee why that would be upsetting that's one one a Yolanda Adams has a history of not being there not standing up for back in the day several people 
It's like, I don't deal with Yolanda Adams. Number one, she's nasty. Number two, she's not that. She's not supportive of the people. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah, when Brenda Waters died, she didn't show up at her funeral. And that's the person that gave her her, ch her chance. I'm like, oh, didn't know that. Willie Thornton, another person that gave her her start. Didn't, wasn't there. So, so daughter ain't innocent by no means. And she's been considered nasty by several. So for this to come out as a bad thing against her, it's not a shock for those of us who know of her. Granted, that's what was said, and that's all I can go by is what's been presented. So that's one thing, that Yolanda's not innocent. And she could have called her. Now, moving on. Second side is... Cameron Hall is a messy cow. Messy cow. How many times have you ever been in a situation where a person has baited you? So they come at you with names. You start defending yourself and start talking about the names that she that she calls because they're supposed to be your friends. And you find out later that that person went back and told everything that you said about them that they baited you. That's what daughter did. She baited Kim. We, all we hear is Kim throwing Yolanda. But if you listen, she said, out of the names that you named, I'm, I'm, I'm hurt by the fact that these people did not come to me. And I'm not going to do them that way. But Yolanda Adams, which was one of the names that she named. Tamman Messi. Messy. We've all been there. Don't take the bait of this messy cow. Because she was messy. She put her name out there in order for her to talk about her. Moving on. Another aspect of things. This is journalism, y'all. Tamron Hall is trying to make a bigger name for herself. There's still people that don't know who Tamron Hall is. The reality is I've watched her show. It's boring. It's boring. Between her watching her and the talk, I'd rather watch the talk. And I don't even like to talk. It's boring. So, she knows that Kimberrell is a hot topic. And if she put Kimberrell on and, and make it a controversial thing to where she's throwing somebody under the bus, Kimberrell bought it. She baited her so that she can say something about Yolanda or one of the people that she named. So she can go viral. And guess what? Daughter is going viral. I guarantee more people are, are, are Googling Tamron Hall now than they've ever done it before. Why? Journalism gold. Don't buy into that. That's my stance. So, now that we've unpacked all that, I still say you have a right to your opinion. I have a right to my opinion. Your opinion matters so Let's talk about your opinion. Like, share, subscribe, but mostly comment about what you think. Was Sister Wrong? What's your opinion about Yolanda? What's your opinion about the conversation? What's your, what's your opinion about Tamron? You think daughter was innocent? You think daughter had Yolanda's back? Or was she baiting her? Do you see? Let me know what you think. And um, until we meet again, God be with you.